All right, everybody, so in this video, we're going to solve these two equations. Um, I'm going to walk through this one slowly, and then I'm going to ask you all to press pause on the video and do this one all by yourself, okay? So um, let's start with this one, um, 0.2x plus 0 0.5 times 12 minus x equals 3.6. So same procedure, when we solve these equations, we first simplify and then we solve. Simplify means like add like terms, use the distributive property, simplify both sides as much as you can. Solve means add or subtract the both sides to end up with, in the end, hopefully, x equals some number, okay? So, Looking at this, the right is all simplified. On the left, though, we have this distributive property possibility here because we've got a 0 0.5 right beside a parentheses. So that implies we need to actually multiply by 0 0.5 here and here, okay? So 0 0.5 times 12, you can write down the answer, but I'm just going to walk through it. If you can't think of it off the top of your head, Here's how it works. 0 0.5 times 12. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry 1. 5 times 1 is 5 and 1 is 6. And there's one decimal place in the multiplication, so there's 1 in the answer. So that's 6.0 or 6. So 0 0.5 times 12 gives me the number 6. Or you could think of it this way. like That's like a half. A half of 12 is just 6, right? Same thing, right? And now 0 0.5 times negative x is minus 0 0.5x equals 3.6. And then we've got a plus here. And then this is 0 0.2x. Okay with that? Yes. So that is probably the hard part, I guess. Uh, well, part of it anyway. And the next thing is to add like terms. Now we've got two x terms over here. 0.2x and a negative 0.5x. So that's, if we put these together, and you could write it out if you want, like it's negative 0.5 and 0.2. Um, it's kind of like five bad guys and two good guys, right? So it ends up being like negative 0.3 is what it is. 0.2 minus 0.5. It's kind of like if you had 20 cents and you subtracted 50 cents, you'd be in debt by 30 cents, 0 0.3. Okay, that? Yep. And that's 0 0.3x, because these are the x terms. Then we have plus 6 equals 3.6. And then we've got to get x on its own. x is being multiplied by 0 0.3, negative 0 0.3, and then 6 is being added, so subtract 6 from both sides. Now, 3.6 minus 6, how do we do that? Well, we can go 6.0 and then subtract 3.6, and then remember that our answer will be negative. It's like 6 is just 6.0. So putting these two things together, like it's like $3.60 and then spend $6, now you're going to be in debt type of thing, right? So we subtract. So borrow from the 6 and that leaves a 5 and you bring a 1 over here to make 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. 5 minus 3 is 2. And when you're subtracting, the decimal points go underneath each other like that. So 6 minus 3.6 is 2.4. But if you've got a negative 6.0 and a positive 3.6, that actually makes negative 2.4. Now, are we okay with that one? Right. And so on the left, we have 6 minus 6 is 0. So we've got negative 0.3x equals negative 2.4. So 0, 0 0.3 has been multiplied by x. So to get it on its own, divide by negative 0.3. And we've got to do that on both sides. Divide by negative 0 0.3. So on the left, it's negative over negative positive. 
0 0.3 over 0 0.31 x, or just x on the left. And on the right, take your time. But let's write down the sign first, because that's a negative over negative, which is? Positive. Positive, yeah. And it's 2.4 over 0 0.3. I'm just going to write that down, because I know some of you guys are going to be all freaking out because of the decimals. We'll take our time. Okay, so 2.4 over 0 0.3. There's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, I'm going to show you, I would do it this way. It just seems to make sense to me that, like, when you see that, you should, like, get rid of the decimals. So, like, you might want multiply this by a fraction that will get rid of the decimals. So what I'm going to ask you all to tell me is, what can I multiply the 0 0.3 by? to end up with the number 3. 10. Yeah. Because like something times 0 0.3 gives 3, that's going to be 10, isn't it? Because that will move that decimal point over one spot. And if I multiply the bottom by 10 and then see if I multiply the top by 10 as well, that will get rid of this decimal point. Because 2.4 times 10 is going to give me 24. It's kind of like saying $2.40 times 10 is $24. And so the 2.4 over 0 0.3 becomes 24 over 3, which is just 8. eight. And so x equals 8. Um, there's another way of doing that. You guys might like to do the dividing by decimals, which is exactly the same thing, really, because... 2.4 over 0 0.3 is 0 0.3 into 2.4. And when we're dividing by decimals like that, you guys, we've got to move the decimal point over one spot in both cases here to get 3 into 24. And by golly, that looks familiar. Because when we multiplied by 10 over 10, we were actually moving the decimal point over. That's actually what we were doing. It's the same thing, right? 3 to 24 gives 8. So that's another way of doing the division, right? Okay with that? Yeah, I'm happy.